Hello, beautiful souls. How are you this day? September 17th, 2024. It has been a rough one. Are you hydrating? Are you getting your feet on the ground? Make sure you get your grounding in. Make sure you get outside. Walk away from the TV. Unless you're watching Helium Disclosures with Nicole. <laughs> um, no, really, it's it's chaotic for those who don't know the truth. And I fully anticipate that there's going to be some people in your life that you have triggered in the past or you drop some mustard seeds along the way and they're going to come back to you and go, do you have a minute? Can we talk? And I do encourage you to not be all, I told you so, and all that because it's low vibrational. Just simply spread peace, love, and calmness, because that is what we are about right now. That is what we should be about always. To walk away and turn away from the chaos is spiritual growth. It's truly the embodiment of faith over fear. Today, I'm going to talk to you about tr being triggered and how can you turn being triggered into healing, into a purpose, turn the pain into purpose. So the definition of triggered by your local search engine, a response by a particular action, process, or situation, example, a triggered memory of his childhood. Many of us are triggered from things that we have experienced in our life. And a lot of it came from our childhood traumas, right? We grew up on this duality planet full of um, narratives and um, mind manipulation and energy manipulation and reality manipulation and time manipulation. So it's taken us a while to get here. I'm 51 and I really had some intuitive nudges along the way in my life, but it took me a long time to get here. And this here, I, I've been here for about three years, maybe longer. I don't know. Not long. Seems like a long time, but in re reality, not long. So I'm with you. I've been on this journey with you. I've, I've been triggered in the beginning before I did my shadow work. So I'm speaking from a place that I have elevated myself out of. And I hope that my words, my guidance, my memories of things, and my highest and best heart-centered recommendations help you navigate your journey. There's so many more of us now that can assist you in benevolent ways and just to have a little bit of support, a little bit of encouragement. It, I think it goes a long way. So let's dig in. The general term of being triggered means you get your feelings hurt, right? And part of what you learn whenever you start your shadow work process is that we do not control the actions of other people. What we are in control of are how we react to the actions of other people. We control ourselves. We control our, our what comes out of our mouth. I really don't control what my face looks like because it tends to be a traitor sometimes when I'm trying to keep the truth inside. So I just don't do that. Uh, I'm, I'm very transparent. I've always said my face is like a piece of glass. There's nothing I can hide through there. So let's talk about energy. We are all energy bodies. Everything in our existence is energy, frequency, and vibration. The microphone is energy, frequency, and vibration in a certain order so that I get a microphone, the light, the laptop, the clothes I wear. We, as a body, as a matter, we are all formed and flow of energy. Well, what else is energy? Words. Words carry energy. Words can be empowering, uplifting, loving, nurturing, or they can be disempowering. They can beat you down. They can make you feel unworthy, unloved. So the harmful words we use 
in our human language, we're literally taught these things in school, causes wounds. It's called core wounds. These wounds are in your energy body and your soul. And I clear these core wounds when I do a QET session, but they have been there for decades. Sometimes they're coming with you from prior lives that have never been healed. So you literally come into this existence with wounds from the past. That is quite common. So there are times where you go, I don't even know why, but I just don't like blah, blah, blah. I don't like to see blah, blah, blah. I don't want to hear blah, blah, blah. Well, sometimes it came from a prior existence and it's very valid, but it doesn't mean that that is like the cross you bear the rest of your existence. You acknowledge it. And then you go through the steps to clear it. So we also have this wonderful ability to trap emotions in our organ systems. Did you know that? It probably the most well-known thing, which is still not well-known very by much is when you look at the, um, the foot diagram where all aspects of your feet correlate with organs well it's along those lines so certain emotions attach themselves to certain organ systems and whether it's harmful or positive it attaches and so these emotions can become trapped and when they're toxic when they have low frequency when they are negative when they're harmful They can create issues in your energy body. They cause distortions, congestion, and blockages. So I release trapped emotions from organ systems and and bodies and energy bodies with the physical form is the manifestation of an energy blockage. So a lot of times this gets done as part of the QET session along with other things. And the, the client will come and say, you know, I don't remember ever even mentioning this to you, but this this issue I've had for a long time is now gone. And I'm like, well, that's not, you didn't have to mention it to me. It's just a part of what gets cleared out. And then the effect of that blockage is removed. So for example, the heart holds on to abandonment, betrayal, feeling lost, as well as love unreceived, effort unreceived, heartache, insecurity, and vulnerability. So this can be a big deal, right? So if you are genuinely someone who naturally loves uh, the bulk of humanity very easily, it is quite common that your love has gone unreceived. And it's not because you're not genuine. It's not because the love that you sent out is not worthy of being received. It's that you're just sending it out to people that are not worthy of receiving it but it causes a wound. It makes you feel unworthy of love because it doesn't come back to you, right? So there really should be an energy exchange instead of an energy suck. So when you're always giving love to people, places, and things that do not return positive energy to you, it's a drain. It is a drain on your system. That is just one example. How about betrayal? We've probably all had betrayal in our life. If you haven't, how'd you get that soul contract? (laughs) Anyway, betrayal is a deep wound. And betrayal is something that really has been a hurdle for many people. And I'll tell you why. Because society says you can forgive, but don't forget. But that keeps you tied to the trauma of the betrayal and where your energy flows. That's what you manifest. So if this is the thought because you won't ever let it go because you won't forget, it's always in your head. It keeps coming back up. It's because they haven't been fully healed and you really should do that to release it. It releases you. It releases the other, the other entity, the other person, place, or thing but we're talking about you because we are only in control of ourselves. Remember that. Now, when you have heartache, we've we've had our heart broken. It's not fun. There are times where your 
your physical chest becomes very sore. The last three or four big heartaches that I've had have been over soul family members that um, went off the rails and went to the dark and, and we had to say goodbye to them. They said goodbye to us and we had to cut the cords and do all the things and, and in order to protect our own energy. But there was a pain there. It was a physical pain until I healed that heart chakra space. And so heartaches are the one thing that most people can say, yeah, I felt that. I felt that in my, in my chest, my, my heart, my chest hurts, but it's like this broad, um, deep ache. And that's your, that's your heart chakra. That's from a heartache. That's from a broken heart. So this is why your, your chest literally hurts when you get your heart broken. And so when you work through all the shadows of this life and prior lives, and you want to release the triggers, you want to release the, the core events, the core wounds from whatever the original source events are so that you can give love, forgiveness, and gratitude to the event and let it go. Once you do that, then the trigger no longer has power over you because you've processed it. You've processed it. So in many ways, I assist people in becoming a clear energy body and then also understanding how to navigate their shadow work. Because number one, this is not talked about in mainstream. And it's certainly not talked about by Western uh, trained medical professionals or psychiatric professionals. So you go to seek counseling or to discuss your depression or whatever the status of your health is. And they want to fix you with uh, placating the problem. They want to cover it up. They want to put a bandaid on it. They want to give you a pill. They want to numb you down to the feeling. When in reality, the only thing that will heal you is to feel the feelings associated with the event until they are no longer sharp. You feel them, you lean into the feeling of the pain because at the end of the day, it's a little discomfort, but it doesn't actually last. There's been studies done on this and they say it lasts anywhere from 30 to 90 minutes and then it dissipates and then you can come to terms with it. Then you're no longer feeling like you're in defensive mode, but you're dealing with it, okay? So. First thing I recommend is a QET session to get everything cleared and moved out. That would literally take a lifetime to do on your own. So this is just quantum energy healing. Mother Sophia has blessed me with this ability and you get a completely clear energy body. So we're clearing out blockages. We're opening chakras. We're ensuring that the flow of energy is nice and good. And that is your energy centers. So you can connect to your higher self. You can connect to the divine, connect to your guides and you maintain that. Okay, so the first step you want to do is get clear, but it's not a forever thing. You have to maintain it. If you have people in your life that are sending you negative energy all the time and you don't do anything about that, like define a healthy boundary and enforce it, that's just going to keep coming back because you're not making it a priority to maintain your clear energy field and establishing boundaries and enforcing those boundaries. So you immediately start your shadow work. As soon as you're clear, as soon as you're clear there, you, the QET session integrates over seven to 14 days. While you're detoxing, you still have the abilities to connect. You have, you're completely clear. You have the abilities to get your answers from your guides, from your higher self. Is this in my highest and best good? Am I intended to do this? Is this person highest and best to be in my life? Am I supposed to do blah, blah, blah. And it's a course correction because We've obviously gone off the rails at some point in time in our life. We end up completely submerged in the matrix. And now we're coming up out of the mud and the muck, right? You got to come up and start clearing that shit off of you some way. This is the most efficient, effective way. So you start to feel the pain, the heartache, the sorrow, the frustration, the anger of your shadows, which are where you get triggered. So when someone triggers you, it's literally a pin on the energy body, the soul map 
of where you need to do work. At the bottom of that event is a source of your pain. And it could be completely unrelated to the thing that's triggering you. You may be projecting onto someone else and then their normal life is triggering you because you had an event 20 or 30 years ago you have never dealt with. So whose fault is it if you want to assign blame for you being triggered? Well, it's yours because you've chosen to run from the shadow instead of dealing with it. Feeling is healing. The more you can feel into that, the more you can reconcile it. Okay. There's many, many different aspects to what occurs to us for us in our life. So understanding that you have a soul contract. I cover all this in my book, Sold or Soulless. You can pick it up on Amazon. But the gist is, as an energy body, as a soul decides, because they have free will choice, to incarnate in a life, they sit around with the karmic board. And the players of the roles to assist them in their soul contract. So most energy bodies, most souls will um, incarnate with the same soul pod. So many times it's the same soul family members that are incarnating together to evolve and grow on their own to ascend kind of as a group. It, each time you incarnate, you can incarnate as a man, as a woman, you're white, you're black, you're Asian, you're um, poverty contracted, or you're abundance contracted, you're a negative polarity life, you're a positive polarity life, right? So you have the decisions that are made with the karmic board about when you arrive, what's your name, what what is the family you're going to be arriving into, which is the matter, the form you're going to take up, the host, and what experiences are going to be provided for you in your soul contract by all those fill in the roles to help you evolve. That's why at the end of the day, you have a role in all the things that make you stronger. And we become stronger because we become uncomfortable. We have friction. We have trauma. We have pain. We have strife. We, we find our inner strength in those moments and we evolve out of it. Or we choose not to. And we choose to repeat the cycle of pain and victimhood over and over and over again making it everyone else's responsibility but your own if that is where you are in your journey you have a long way to go but it's only up to you to heal yourself if you're serious about healing and if you're done being triggered every time you turn around commit to healing yourself that is how we do it clear your energy maintain it as a priority every day as important as taking a shower and brushing your teeth you maintain your energy body. You hold yourself accountable for defining healthy boundaries and enforcing the healthy boundaries. That's a really important part of this because without it, well, you let people walk all over you, right? And that's that's opening up the floodgates to more pain, more core wounds, more things, that, more shadows that are going to be created that you have to deal with. So if it's childhood trauma, adult trauma, sexual trauma, family trauma, past life trauma, all the same stuff gets really dealt with the same way, okay? The best way that, that we do this, and this is over hundreds of people, is you understand that everybody has a role to play. And you came into this existence with a role to play. So either you were going to be a positive polarity being where you were going to be in service to others and you were going to really be for the greater good or you're going to be a negative polarity being in this life and you're going to be in service to self and you were going to cause harm you're going to also have villains in your life no matter which polarity you choose because each time you have free will choice in a duality dimension to choose am i choosing the higher timeline or am i choosing the lower timeline am i going to do what's in service to others or am i do what's in service to self this is the choices that we are asked to make every single day. This is why young souls 
So souls that have not incarnated very much have to have 12 to 17 incarnations to get to the point where they're ascension ready. That's all just the prep work on a very, very young soul. They have to understand what pain is. They have to understand what hardship is. They have to understand what life is like without the light to appreciate and covet the light, right? So I've had many, many sessions before where the the client is really destitute. They don't have a lot, but they really are in need. And sources says, you know, just do your session for a dollar. And I've done it. Sometimes I do it for nothing. It depends on what the guidance is. But I've learned that if a being invests nothing in their in their wellness, they also put forth zero effort. If they invest very little, they put forth very little effort. It's a direct correlation. And if they actually come to it with the knowledge and the acceptance that this is what I need to, to spend in order to heal me in a way that is positive to navigate my future in a high consciousness state, they are really invested. They come to the table ready to do the work. So that's a decision for you to make, not for me to do. You have to reconcile the fact that every member of an event deserves love, forgiveness, and gratitude, most importantly, yourself. You may be sitting there right now having a realization of like, fuck, I soul contracted this shit. <laughs> That's what I did. I soul contracted to have narcissists in my life and surround me by dark witches. That was my soul contract. What? The, how bored was I in the higher dimensions? Everything must have just been so freaking peaceful <laughs> that I had to create some challenges. And boy, did I. But now I understand why these things happened for me because I coordinated them with those beings. So in that sense, not getting into emotions and all the different rabbit holes you can go down, just right there, stop, full stop. I played a role in this person coming into my life, check. I forgive myself for inviting this into my life and the harm that it caused others as well as myself check i love myself and i love the being that did this fully committed to carry out this negative event to help me and my soul growth check and i am grateful because I, without this event i would not have grown and i would not have learned this lesson and sometimes you don't learn the lessons the first time for me, I didn't learn the lesson from the narcissist for about four or five times. And it was all on me. It was all me being in my ego and being judgmental and feeling like I was right and they were wrong. And I was going to make it so by force. And boy, did I learn that lesson in a very long and drawn out traumatic life. I finally allowed myself to realize I do not know it all. I am not in control of what other people do. And I have to heal my own wounds so that I start projecting my wounds on other people. Because it is not them that wounded me. I played a part in that. And that's how you go through. So being triggered, in my opinion, is a really good way to start and know that you should start your shadow work. If you're interested in really giving yourself a very, very clear, concise way to go about navigating the rest of your ascension journey or the rest of your life, even if you're not on an ascension journey, go to violetlotusenergy.com, check out the QET session. That's what you have to have first. There's lots of beautiful activations and things like that that are there too, but you got to start with the QET because you got to be clear. You got to know who you're dealing with. You have to establish healthy boundaries. You have to give love, forgiveness, and gratitude to all involved that causes you to feel triggered. And then you have peace. And then you have calm inside your being, maybe for the first time. But it is a wonderful payoff for the little bit of pain and the work that you have to go through for shadow work. Is shadow work fun? Absolutely not. If anybody tells you it's fun, it's not. It's just not. I want to give you what Kuan Yin has to say 
about suffering. Kuan Yin on why would anyone hurt an innocent child? Kuan Yin, they did not know how to stop what they did. The suffering in it takes, the suffering that it takes to wound a child in such a way as this or in any way at all is a suffering beyond logic. As a wild animal bent over in maddening pain strikes without thought, so to the human awareness possessed by suffering cannot stop itself from hurting others. Suffering exacts such acts of pain upon others without reason. For suffering is the true definition of insanity. And this is why Kuan Yin worked with me and we developed the Karuna Compassion Inner Child Healing. It is a specialized activation healing service on my, on my violetlotusenergy.com. And the Sanskrit root for the word compassion is Karuna. That's why the quantum healing energy of Karuna, compassion, is delivered direct from the divine. If you would like to start this journey, please visit violetlotusenergy.com, check things out, and we'll be happy to assist you in this. And so that you can have peace, loving, and calmness in your life and no longer go through life feeling immensely triggered in all things. Many blessings.